Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is John Such. I'm from our Pathian site in the UK. Uh, and I'm going to be talking to you along with my colleague Sanjay this afternoon about the spray drying side of our solubility enhancement platform. Now we had a talk yesterday that took us through the Pathian Quadrant 2 approach and I'm not going to go through that in any detail uh, this afternoon but just say this is the starting point for any spray dried project for us. This is, uh, allows us to do some in silico modelling to really understand the molecule before we get into the lab. And the first step uh, in this case study that I'm going to take you through today involves using the Pathian Quadrant 2 uh, computational modelling screening part of that uh, system to look at the molecule in question and in this case screen it against various different polymers that we might use in spray drying. And in the case study that I'm talking about this afternoon, these are the lead candidates that were identified through that system as, a, as the right place to start. So even without going into the lab, we're already on the right track to producing a solid dispersion of this molecule uh, to help overcome its solubility issues. So the next step then is to go into the lab. We can do very small scale trials using Ibuki B290. Doesn't use too much uh, API. And in this case, we were looking at a 20% dispersion of our API with the polymers that we'd selected through the Quadrant 2 system. Uh, both dissolved in uh, acetone and then doing small spray runs to give us samples for characterization. So the reason that we're doing the solubility enhancement is to improve solubility and therefore bioavailability. So one of the key tests for that is using a non-sync dissolution test in two different media. So we start off in a gastric component and then move into an intestinal phase in our micro dissolution. This is important for helping us understand how the molecule's going to behave in the body, but also because some of these polymers are enteric polymers, and so we'll only start to dissolve at uh, the higher pHs. And we get some really nice data, as you can see here, from our different polymers. So uh, what we're looking for is both an increase in solubility, so the spring effect, which we see very nicely with PVAP here, but also uh, sustain of this solubility, so the parachute, which as you can see, here with HPA, uh, HPMC AS M grade. So this is a really good place to start. What we then went back to do is to look at, you know, we, can we still get nice effects that we were seeing but with higher drug loadings in the uh, solid dispersions. The higher the drug loading, the smaller our overall dosage form will be at the end, particularly for high dose drugs. And you can see here for this molecule we then looked at 40% drug loadings and 50% drug loadings in the polymer and we're still getting this really nice kick and maintenance of solubility uh, far exceeding what we'd get with just the crystalline API. The other important information for us is is it amorphous and is it stable as an amorphous? So we look at various things like these DSC thermograms which show very clear glass transition temperatures showing us that we have amorphous solid dispersions and we also, ooh, excuse me, we also have uh, XRD of course. So this is the crystalline drug and here are 40% and 50% solid dispersions which are being maintained as amorphous solid dispersions uh, when we've created them, which is what we were targeting to do. It's what Quadrant 2 told us would happen, but it's always nice to see the data that shows that it does happen like that. So we can, we've shown that we can make a solid dispersion up to 50% drug loading, in this case in PVAP, that's amorphous, that has the solubility increase that we want, and importantly, is stable. So this study here, we had the uh, dispersions at 40% and 50%, in open and closed containers at 40 degrees, 75% humidity, uh, open and closed, and you can see all through that time, despite the very harsh conditions, they remain as um, uh, amorphous dispersions, which is what we want. We've, we've challenged them here, they haven't crystallized, so that gives us a lot of confidence that we can move forward with these dispersions into later development. Now, one of the really nice things about this case study is we have um, some in vivo data to go with the in vitro data that I've just shared with you. And what you can see here with our 20% solid dispersions is at low doses, we're getting an amazing fraction absorbed. Compared to the crystalline API, you can see how much that solubility improvement and the area under the curve improvement has really improved the fraction absorbed, which is, after all, the goal of this program. So 
And the other interesting thing on this slide is if we look at the higher doses, there's a bit, there's still an amazing increase compared to the crystalline API, but there's also a different rank order. And we can correlate that back to the dissolution data I showed you at the start, answering the question, what's more important, is it the spring or the parachute? The answer is the, the parachute effect there, giving us the overall prolonged exposure is, is leading to really high fraction absorbed. On the right there, we have the 50% active, uh, percent active solid dispersion. And again, you can see we're getting great exposure compared to the crystalline API. So we've demonstrated we can make a solid dispersion of this API. We can make it at a high concentration, that it's stable over time, that it gives great dissolution, and more importantly, that it gives great data in vivo. So this formulation then got taken forward for an early um, first in man study. Uh, and this is the key. This is the reason that we've done this uh, with the crystalline API. We're getting very low Cmax, very low area under the curve. Whereas when we take this in as a capsule formulation into a first in man study, you can see we've got an eight and a half fold increase in Cmax and a five fold increase in area under the curve, which uh, by any measure is a, is a fantastic success. So the success of this molecule in phase one then meant it was to progress on through phase two and beyond. And that's where I'll hand you over to Sanjay, who'll talk you through how that happened. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm going to uh, go over the next uh, phase of the project. As John uh, covered uh, in the initial portion of this talk, uh, we had uh, excellent success in uh, uh, phase one. And uh, uh, the next thing to do was scale it up to phase two. Um, and that involved uh, scaling up the uh, spray dried intermediate as well as scaling up the dosage form. So what you see here is the design space for uh, scaling up a spray dried intermediate into a dosage form. Uh, the, the three axes on this slide, uh, this axis is the percent of uh, active in the solid dispersion. This is the percent of uh, spray dried intermediate in the tablet and, and uh, this axis is the unit dose. So you need to balance the uh, percent of uh, API in the dispersion with the percent of API in the tablet in order to achieve the target desired dose. The dose in this case was uh, rather high, um, 200 milligrams uh, 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 upward. So based on that, you can uh, uh, box the design space to achieve the tablet of 200 milligram active uh, as shown in this blue uh, rectangle there. And nor as you know, normally one gram tablet is the highest uh, uh, most uh, people would like to swallow. So for patient compliance uh, reasons, we fixed the tablet at one gram. Uh, the dose was uh, uh, nominally 200 milligrams. So uh, basically uh, that led to the tablet containing at least 50% of spray dried intermediate. Uh, so that's the design space we had to operate under. Uh, so Regarding the scale up of the spray dried intermediate, um, uh, John uh, showed the data with the small scale Buki spray drying uh, process. That's uh, typically about a uh, few, few hundreds of milligrams to uh, tens of grams. Uh, for phase two, we need tens of kilograms. So we need to scale up. So to scale up, you're going to be balancing three different um, parameters, dose, um, the, the type of polymer and the loading of the API in the polymer. And uh, from going from the lab scale to the uh, pilot scale, which is an anhydro MS-150, you're looking at balancing the manufacturability, performance, and stability. Uh, so the, th those three have to be balanced uh, while you scale up uh, and achieve the equivalent performance that we uh, obtained um, in, uh, uh, for the spray dried intermediate as well as the uh, tablet. So I'm going to cover uh, how, we, how we tackle uh, spray drying uh, scale up. Uh, spray drying is a, uh, a closed loop process. It can also be done in uh, open loop. Uh, so what I'm showing you here is a schematic of the spray drying process. You have a solution tank which contains the spray drying uh, uh, intermediate dissolved in an organic solvent with the API. So you have your drug polymer and a organic solvent. Uh, you have a spray drying chamber. Uh, uh, and you spray this organic uh, solution containing the drug and the polymer into a drying chamber uh, using a nozzle. The nozzles can be uh, several types. Uh, the two fluid is what we use uh, in uh, Patheon at uh, our site in uh, Oregon. Uh, it could also be a pressure nozzle or a uh, rotary atomizer. Uh, 
and at the same time, co-currently, you are introducing hot drying gas. So the hot drying gas comes in contact with the spray, spray solution, which is atomized. Uh, it drives off the solvent, and you collect the powder um, through a cyclone uh, into a container. And then the rest of the gas containing the solvent is recycled through. It goes through a bag house, goes through a condenser, so you can condense out the solvent, and comes back into the chamber. So uh, that's uh, a fairly uh, standard uh, process for uh, spray drying, uh, and it's uh, uh, done in a recycle mode. A lot of times uh, uh, people do it in a single pass, but uh, from, uh, for environmental uh, 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 factors uh, as well as the cost of uh, recycling the drying gas, uh, the closed loop process is uh, much more uh, amenable for that. Uh, some math here, I won't bore you with too much. Uh, the point of this uh, math on this slide is to show you that we understand the process very well. Uh, we can model it. We, are, we have thermodynamic models uh, that we use for modeling the process. Uh, so we know what type of organic solvent we are using. We, are, we know what type of spray rates that we can achieve. Um, so, uh, everything is done uh, on a computer uh, by using first principles uh, uh, heat and mass balances. So essentially, uh, you couple the heat and mass transfer, uh, uh, and uh, these are the governing equations. Uh, and this is how uh, you draw a control volume and then uh, balance out the incoming energy, both in terms of uh, heat and mass. Uh, there's one thing that you need to de determine experimentally, which is, which is the heat loss factor. And what that is, is there's a lot of metal and surface area uh, in, a, uh, in the process. And there's an inherent loss that happens to the environment. And that's what you're trying to determine experimentally. And we did that by just spraying solvent, uh, which I'm showing here in the graph. And uh, we uh, derived the heat, lo heat loss factor. Again, these are basic uh, uh, equations for uh, uh, heat transfer. Um, uh, so uh, essentially, our model now can uh, predict uh, the operating parameters within uh, plus minus two degrees Celsius which is uh, excellent. So we don't need to do a lot of work to determine process conditions. We can uh, uh, target uh, uh, the desired uh, uh, process conditions uh, for obtaining a dry product. Uh, this is how the model looks. Uh, uh, this is an um, uh, uh, interface that the operator and uh, the engineers can input. These are the inputs of uh, uh, solvent system, uh, the solids content, the desired uh, target flow rate, uh, you're looking at drying gas parameters. Uh, you're looking at relative saturation uh, at the uh, inlet and the outlet, and you set your condenser. So you just input your parameters, and you can uh, model the system. Uh, uh, very useful. Uh, so the next step is uh, to do some uh, um, uh, design of experiments, and we uh, uh, adopt a QBD-based approach. I'm showing an example of. Uh, uh, a design of experiments that we did uh, uh, for this project. We, we, we narrowed it down onto atomizing pressure, solids con content, and uh, the solution temperature. We already mapped out the thermodynamic operating space uh, by using our model. Uh, this is uh, how the uh, uh, DOE actually looks. Uh, so feed rate, atomizing pressure, and outlet temperature. Uh, three uh, variables, uh, two levels. And uh, uh, we're able to get our critical uh, process parameters and the critical quality attributes. Uh, so the reason we chose the solution flow rate, atomizing pressure, and the outlet temperature is because they are the crit CPPs, or the critical processing parameters for the process. And the CQAs are uh, things like yield, uh, particle size, bulk tap density, which impact flow, uh, et cetera. Some more, um, some more example of a DOE output uh, uh, that we analyzed. You want, you want to get, get a, a large enough particle size while maximizing yield. So I'm showing you a surface plot, uh, uh, showing you uh, a, a, a D50, which is the median particle size as a function of your solution flow rate and atomizing pressure. Um, so that essentially, your particle size uh, is uh, dictated by how fast you spray and how much you atomize it. Um, again, this gives us a, a, a ways to optimize the process. So that's how we handle uh, scaling up the spray drying process uh, uh, by a combination of first principles, th thermodynamic model for the 
the process as well as design of experiments. Um, I'm moving on to the drug uh, product. Drug, so spray dried intermediate is a drug product intermediate. Uh, it's a, it's a, after all, it's powder. What are you going to do with a, a bunch of powder? You need to be able to uh, make it into a dosage form. And uh, what we do is uh, typically uh, convert it into tablets or capsules. I'm going to talk about tablets because uh, that's the uh, most widely used uh, uh, oral dosage form, as we know. So this is the process scale-up train for uh, the drug product development uh, uh, for a tablet. Uh, standard blend mill blend. Um, so at a small scale, initially, at uh, the feasibility, uh, 20, 30 gram scale, we uh, use a slugging process, which is using a single punch press, makes a slug or a compact, uh, and we mill it by screening it through a sieve. Uh, that's what uh, we uh, do the dry sizing, then do some uh, blending lubrication, and we have a single punch press that we use for compression. Uh, that's purely for prototype development. Uh, when we scale up, we have to go to larger pieces of equipment. Um, so things like a co-mill, blender, uh, roller compactor, uh, other mill, other bl blender, uh, blending step and compression. So uh, we understand uh, 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 this process train very well and uh, uh, we uh, conducted this for the, this uh, project and I'm showing you some data from uh, the scale up work. I'm showing you the uh, particle size uh, of the granulation. Um, uh, uh, of the granules after roller compaction. I'm showing you the uh, vector roller compactor is what we used. Um, some hardness compression profiles, which is showing excellent uh, uh, compressibility. Some flow properties here, uh, showing uh, excellent flow. And here are the granulation parameters that we uh, used for this uh, process. So uh, um, it's all, it's all uh, good data, which uh, uh, was uh, 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 valuable for uh, making a robust drug product. And this is how the tablet uh, uh, looks. Um, um, we uh, adopted a modified capsule shape design. Um, uh, um, looking at some of the parameters of uh, um, the friability and the disintegration time, uh, um, very good. Uh, we, we wanted a, a high a rapid disintegration so that the spray dried intermediate can um, uh, do its magic in the body, uh, so that so that was intentionally done to rapidly disintegrate. We want, of course, low friability, and some other and and, ta and the weight uh, RST is uh, very tight. We want uh, very uh, very low variability as uh, as uh, as far as weight goes. Uh, and here's the dissolution data uh, for the tablet. Uh, so John showed the uh, phase one PK data, which was a capsule, and uh, that is uh, shown in the triangle, uh, uh, green triangle, and we had to match the same uh, target profile for the uh, phase two tablet, and that's shown in the red square and the blue diamond. Uh, both we, uh, the, the two different uh, profiles of two different tablet shapes, uh, we actually looked at uh, a slightly different modified uh, tablet uh, shape as well. That's why there's two, two curves for the tablets. So the similarity factor basically you know, shows that uh, the dissolution profiles for the capsule and the tablets are essentially the same. So, which was a success story. Um, so I'm going to uh, wrap up by, uh, by uh, uh, tying it all to the talk yesterday that uh, 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 Matt Vessel and myself gave, uh, and as well as this. So this is a, a differentiator for uh, Patheon, uh, uh, the Quadrant 2 approach. Uh, we provide a rigorous uh, analytical and modeling approach for formulation. Now, and uh, and uh, we went over the elements of quadrant two, how we do the modeling. And, uh, and in this talk, I went over how we do the scale up uh, of both the spray dried intermediate as well as the uh, drug product, um, uh, which uh, uh, basically looking at uh, performance, manufacturability, and stability, Bal balancing all those three we were able to achieve a uh, robust uh, drug product uh, for phase two. With that, uh, I conclude uh, my talk and I thank uh, Marshall Crew, Tom Reynolds and Matt Vessel uh, who are uh, all part of uh, uh, this program.